market economy, prices are set by demand and supply, which means prices are ultimately determined by how much consumers are willing to pay and how much sellers are willing to accept for the items in question. The market price in a competitive market is established where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. This point provides a single market price and a single quantity of goods in that market, both determined by the point where the supply and demand curves intersect on a graph. But how can we determine how well off a society is because of the ability to trade with each other? This is where the concepts of consumer surplus and producer surplus become valuable. Consumer surplus is the difference between the maximum price that an individual consumer or market would be willing to pay to receive a good and the actual price they have to pay. Consumer surplus is often seen as a measure of how well off buyers are in a market because of low prices they get to pay. Every potential consumer has a maximum price point that they are willing to pay. This price reflects the value that the potential consumer has for that particular good or service. The consumer's willingness to pay also reflects the opportunity cost of the purchase, the value or benefit of the next best alternative given up when making a choice how much value the potential buyer has for the purchase relative to what else the buyer could have spent money on determines the buyer's willingness to pay. Having to pay even a penny above this value would be considered too costly as far as the consumer is concerned. Above a potential consumer's maximum price point, the consumer is no longer in the market for that good or service. If prices fall, that consumer will enter the market and consumer surplus will increase. But if prices increase, the consumer surplus will likely shrink. The concept of maximum willingness to pay offers a different way to consider a demand curve, or a line on a graph showing different combinations of quantity demanded and price, which can also be used to show the maximum price that an individual consumer or the demand side of the market would be willing to pay. For example, assume individual consumers are willing to pay different maximum amounts for their morning coffee, ranging from 10 cents on the low end to $4 on the high end. This can be represented on a demand schedule, which is a table showing the quantity demanded of a good at different price points and can also be used to show the maximum price that a single consumer would be willing to pay. It's important to note that these basic calculations do not take into account every possible factor that could impact demand and the price that consumers would be willing to pay. Ceteris paribus is a Latin term meaning all other things being equal. In economics, ceteris paribus means all other variables are being held constant or no other changes are occurring at the same time as the price change. Ceteris paribus is an important concept in economics because in real life, many aspects of the economy are in motion at the same time. In order to study the effect of prices on quantity of a good demanded by consumers, all other variables like preferences or income must be held constant. This will be an important concept when we start analyzing the effects of price changes on consumers and producer surplus. Let's look at our market for coffee again. A demand schedule can be used to create a demand curve for this market. Each customer's willingness to pay corresponds to a spot on the market demand curve. Note that the demand curve is downward sloping, indicating that as the price of a cup of coffee goes down, the quantity of coffee demanded increases. In this scenario, if a cup of coffee is $4, the only individual out of the six that will pay for it is Andrea. Assuming the actual market price of a cup of coffee is $2, Andrea's individual consumer surplus is $2, the difference between what she's willing to pay, $4, and what she actually pays, $2. Three out of the six individuals are willing to pay $2 for a cup of coffee. If we wanted to calculate the entire consumer surplus for the market, we would add Andrea's, Brett's, and Christie's individual consumer surplus together. This value would represent the total consumer surplus in the coffee market at a price of $2. If the price falls to 75 cents, there would be five individuals willing to buy a cup of coffee. Andrea, Brett, and Christie would still be interested in purchasing the coffee because they were willing to purchase it at a higher price. With the new lower prices, Deb and Eddie are both willing to purchase a cup of coffee, thus the quantity demanded for coffee would increase. Andrea, Brett, and Christy will see an increase in their individual consumer surplus, while Deb and Eddie enter the market and add their own new consumer surplus to the total consumer surplus for the market.